Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick reminder today from our honeypots that if you ever see some of these backslash x16 sequences in your weblog, it's probably just someone trying to use TLS to connect to a web server that doesn't support TLS. Seeing this all the time, in particular, of course, these days with TLS being sort of the default uh, a lot of bots and such that are connecting to web servers are also using TLS by default. And that's uh, all this is about. So not necessarily an attack and uh, maybe just someone uh, using the wrong tool or legitimately trying to connect to your web server that may not be configured correctly. But talking about real attacks against uh, web applications, turns out there is a new vulnerability in Magento 2, the Adobe e-commerce platform. And that vulnerability, which was patched on Sunday, is already publicly being exploited. So Adobe did release the patch. You are vulnerable if you are running anything uh, before Magento 3.7 P2 or 243P1. Uh, so the 2.3 and 2.4 branches are vulnerable. The vulnerability does lead to unauthenticated remote code execution. So it's about as bad as it comes. Sadly, the patch is a little bit tricky to implement. It uh, arrives as a zip file and a patch file that you sort of have to manually apply. And if you look at the patch that was published, it does insert uh, two new uh, code segments that uh, will replace a particular pattern that consists of two nested squirrely brackets. So uh, that's basically what the vulnerability is all about. According to uh, Sansec, you could theoretically look for sort of this squirrely pattern here in a web application firewall, but they note that you may also run into some false positives here. So uh, this is not necessarily the best approach to actually filter uh, any attacks. I don't know if um, you have a hard time patching, it's probably still better uh, than have arbitrary code executed on your web server. So everybody running Magento, this should be your number one and probably only priority uh, today on Tuesday to deal with this vulnerability. And Apple today released updates for macOS Big Sur and macOS Catalina. Kind of interesting, uh, the uh, Catalina update is specifically labeled a security update, but it also says uh, this update has no published CVE entries. So not really sure what to make of this, probably something you do want to apply if you are still running Catalina or a Big Sur doesn't appear to fix the WebKit vulnerability that uh, they patched last week. Again, they did release actually for Big Sur and Catalina a new version of Safari that should take care of it. And that was released on February 10th. So take it as a little mystery security update and see what breaks when you apply it. And talking about last week's update to macOS Monterey, apparently there are some issues if you're upgrading macOS Monterey and if you also have Microsoft Defender ATP installed. Users are experiencing uh, reboot loops and the way to fix this appears to be to first uninstall Defender, then uh, upgrade your Mac, then reinstall Defender and uh, that apparently solves the problem. Also, some users of M1 Max uh, noted that uh, they were no longer able to use uh, the Rosetta uh, middleware that does allow you to run Intel software on M1 Max. So that appears to be another side effect of this update and again of Microsoft Defender. It's not the first time that uh, there was an interaction between a Mac OS update and a Windows or Microsoft Defender update. So we want to keep a note of that. And for future updates, be careful if you also run a Microsoft Defender. 
And Google did release an update for Google Chrome. And yes, the world is good again. We uh, do have a zero day that's being addressed with this update. This is CVE 2022-0609, a use after free vulnerability. And if you are running Moxa MX View, the network management software, well, uh, the web-based component does uh, have a number of vulnerabilities that were addressed now that if chained together could use, be used to achieve remote code execution. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.